welcome back once again. By this point, you've seen me paint a lot of different Guards of Atlantis minis, and most of them I've done in a pretty similar fashion to one another. So to start branching out and showing some alternative painting methods, this time I'm going to be using mostly regular acrylics, no speed paints. Just like with the previous video on Brogan, I also aim to paint Wasp at a pretty fast pace, well, fast for me at least, hopefully having her done in three to four hours, so basically one to two painting sessions. If you feel inclined to spend the time and effort removing mold lines, definitely get the one on the left knee and the side of the torso, and the mold lines on the top of the right arm and the right leg armor piece are also pretty noticeable. The rest should be pretty much fine though. I'm starting by doing some work on the skin, just applying two thin coats of a fairly dark brown color. I'm painting the skin first since it's sort of the innermost part of the model, which makes it feel like a natural starting point. There are a few areas that I missed or that were a bit tricky. Make sure to get the little bits of leg skin, as well as the feet around the sandals. If you don't want her to look so revealing, you could certainly also just paint parts of the skin as if they're covered by cloth, and I think it'll look like a believable skin-tight clothing sort of look. It's helpful to make the second coat a bit thinner as well, so that it flows easily into the crevices that you may not have gotten with the first layer. Then I mixed a little bit of this not too vibrant purple color into black to get a fairly dark, desaturated purple gray color. And again, I thinned this a little bit with water to make the application easier. I used this to paint all of the black straps and belts and such, as well as the hair. I also painted the backpack coil this color, but in retrospect I wouldn't do this, since I end up painting it with a bright blue electricity effect later. I'm using some faint purple tints in some of my colors on Wasp, just to sort of follow along with the player board art a bit as well, since I really like how those colors look. Speaking of, now I shade both the skin and the black leather stuff with a black wash. And while that dries, I paint a layer of light khaki or tannish on the base. And at this point, I also realized that I forgot to paint her foot skin, so I just went back and did that quick too. At some point in here, I also just paint the skull ornament a solid bone color. Back to the skin, I want to keep things somewhat fast and simple, so here's a good template for painting dark skin that works for me. I've already painted the base coat and given it a black wash, and to start highlighting, I pick a brownish pink color and start mixing a bit of that in to highlight the skin. Some paint ranges unfortunately name paints with very Caucasian centric paint color names, but luckily it seems like most newer paint ranges are being a bit more inclusive with their naming conventions. But you still might end up with weird paint name contradictions. For example, right now I'm using a color called Shadow Flesh as a highlight color. I like highlighting dark skin colors with darker peach or pinkish brown colors, the colors typically called things like shadow flesh or basic skin tone. It's a great way to keep the skin looking warm and vibrant, I think. I also want to push the shininess of the skin a bit further, so I continue highlighting up to a lighter skin tone in the very highest highlights. Anyway, that whole skin tone naming convention topic aside, I just layer up some highlights on the skin, working from the dark flesh color up to shadow flesh, and then even brighter in the lightest highlights. I also went the extra mile and highlighted her stomach as if there was a six pack there, even though there's no sculpted detail for that, just because I thought it would be fun. And now it's on to the other big spooky part of this paint job, the white armor and the cloth. I think the pre-shade of gray with a white dry brush didn't get it quite light enough, so first I'm thinning down a very light gray color, fairly close to an actual pure white, and I'm painting a couple of thin layers on to push some of that gray color a bit brighter. I'm sort of reclaiming some of the midtones that are too dark of a gray, and pushing them brighter and closer to actual white. As a bonus, this step will work as the start of the gradient on these surfaces. With these steps, I'm also mixing some medium into the white, in this case Chimera Color Satin Medium, to hopefully keep it from looking too chalky, 
as well as to keep the layers a bit more transparent and gradual. I'm using a satin medium, but a matte medium or any other thinner, like Games Workshop's Lamian medium, would probably work okay as well. I'm pushing this up to pure white, but I keep the pure white fairly thinned down with some medium and a bit of water, so I don't think I ever actually build the surfaces up to a true pure white. And then it's time to knock the value back down a bit and provide a much needed tint of color. I mix up a very desaturated medium purple color, and I thin it down with a significant amount of water, turning it into a very thin paint or sort of thick wash consistency. I apply this to all of the white colors, but I also use a second brush, dampened with a bit of water, to pull the pigment away from the raised surfaces. At this point it looks a little messy, but we'll neaten it up a bit soon. I mix a little bit more purple and gray into the mix, still keeping it very thin, and apply that to the recesses and deeper areas of shadow, but since it's sort of a wash consistency you don't have to be too neat with this. Also you don't have to use purple like I'm doing for this. I chose it because I think it'll look cool, and I've never tried painting purpley white cloth before, but it's also very common to shade white surfaces with light blue, a warm tan or khaki color, or just regular flat gray. And now that the shading's applied, it's time to build back up some white color with some layered highlights. I thin this with some water to keep the layer lines from being too noticeable, but that does mean that this takes a while longer. I think I probably would have gotten a better result by making a very thin purple-gray speed paint mix and applying a few coats of that to the surfaces instead of using my regular acrylics, because the acrylic paint ended up drying a bit splotchy, but oh well. The great part about painting one unique mini instead of a whole group of minis that are all meant to look the same, is that you don't have to worry so much about painting with suboptimal techniques, since you don't ever have to repeat the process over again. And while I'm painting highlights, I also highlight the black cloth up to a light gray. I was a bit heavy-handed and sloppy with these highlights, so in the extra steps that I do later, I might want to knock this color down with some more black shading, but it'll do fine for now. Then I base coat all the trim and gold bits with Proacryl Rich Gold. I specifically really love this gold paint. Its coverage is great, so one coat will be more than enough. I take my time and try to be careful not to get gold on the nice white surfaces or the skin where I already spent a good chunk of time. I paint the armor trim, the belt buckles, and I carefully pick out the headdress and the other decorative stuff, and then I paint the power pack and whatever this crescent boomerang thing is. And with the gold base coat in place, I move on to shading it with snakebite leather contrast paint. Any brownish speed paint or contrast paint will work here, or a wash as well, I just picked one more or less at random. And I know that this is technically breaking my no contrast paints rule for this mini, but I want to use a thick shade at this step, and in my mind this is a bit different from just coloring a surface with contrast paint. And as mentioned, you could also use a brown wash here and get a similar result. Oh, and I also shade the tastefully decorative waist skull with this color as well. At this step I do use a brown wash, but this time just to wash the base while I wait for the shading on the gold to dry. And after waiting a few minutes off camera for that to happen, and somehow miraculously avoiding disaster when I accidentally knocked Wasp onto my wet palette full of paints, I mix some of a light bronze color into the gold and use that to highlight all of those elements. Optionally, then I do a highlight of pure light bronze just to really punch up those gold highlights and make it shiny. Also, since I'm planning to paint the electricity backpack thing like it's glowing, I apply highlights to the metal on the backpack really liberally. Now it's onto the last big component, the blue glow. I carefully traced a pure white oval into each eye, adding paint in slowly and incrementally. Then I thinned down my white paint with some water, just to the point where it flows nicely, but not so that the opacity is too low. Then I paint this over all the surfaces like the coil and the energy chain thing. 
Just be sure it doesn't pool too much in the recesses between the coils or anything. This white will serve as a nice undercoat to make the glow look bright, and from here I take a light turquoise color, thin it down with some water, and paint it over all the glow areas as well. It might seem like painting the glows white first was a waste of time, but it really does make the blue color look much brighter. I glazed in a bit of light blue around the eyes, but I was a bit sloppy with it, so I'll clean that up later. After that I dot the eyes with white again, and then I take a different white color, a white ink this time, just for the fun of it. And with a bit of water mixed in, I use it as a sort of heavy wash on the glow areas. Now I'm really retreading my steps again, but this will make the core of the glow between the coils look nice and bright like it's glowing from within. Then it's on to a few dry brushing steps, bringing back that light blue color on the raised surfaces, and the dry brushing also helps to create an easy object source lighting effect on the surrounding surfaces. I push this fairly dark on the glowing elements to make them have more contrast, which also should help them to stand out more and be more eye-catching. And I refine the glow by thinning the medium blue with a lot of water, and glazing it in a couple thin layers over some of the surrounding surfaces. This does end up knocking down the shininess of the metal more than I liked, so I mix my light gold color with some chrome and add the blue paint to it a little bit, and I use that to highlight some of the metal edges on the backpack and the weapon. And just to push things that little bit further, I take a dark turquoise-ish color and paint it by brush onto some of the raised glowing surfaces, like the tops of the energy coils and the raised edges of the electricity effect. While I'm at it, I also thin this color down more and gently glaze it onto some of the surrounding surfaces again. This has been a lot of back and forth with the light and dark colors, but I just got a bit carried away. You can really do as much or as little of this as you'd like to. Lastly, I give the base a quick off-white dry brush, and I paint the base rim black as well. It's close to done, but the keen observer in the audience might have seen that I need to make a few fixes. I got a splotch of dark gray on the left knee, so I clean that up with a few thin layers, and while I'm at it I darken the skin back down just a little bit, which also helps to smooth the color gradient more. I blend out the blue glow around the eyes as well while I'm at it. I also got a few dots of white on the shadowed area of the waist cloth, so I mix up an approximate color match and use that to hide the dot. Since I have the paint mix on my brush and palette, I also clean up a few other areas of white cloth and armor, smoothing out some rough transitions, reclaiming some highlights, and fixing this one specific armor panel that I accidentally got some of that leather contrast paint on. I also quickly highlight the waist skull ornament a couple times, and the last thing I do is mix a dark gray to pull back the highlights slightly on the black cloth. And that about does it. I ran a bit over time on this one, with about four and a half hours of recorded footage, but probably an extra half hour in there of waiting for different surfaces to dry. Not using speed paints definitely slowed me down a bit, since base coating surfaces and applying washes and such takes longer in comparison, but sometimes it's fun to use different approaches to change things up. But anyway, I'm finally done painting the core box heroes. I want to keep my Guards of Atlantis painting videos pretty accessible for people to follow along with, but I am tempted to incorporate some airbrushing into one or two upcoming videos as I continue to work through the expansions. Let me know if that's of interest to you or not, or if you would find it helpful if I avoid the airbrush and use regular brushes only. And as always, thank you so much for watching, take care of yourself, and I'll see you next time.